Shooting in an empty room might feel intimidating because there is no dimension, no depth, no colors, no furniture. It is hard to make a composition and we don't have any foreground and background to work with. And in general, images might look really flat. However, if you think outside the box, you can achieve really creative, dimensional and stylistic photos even in an empty space. So for today's lesson, we move to a completely empty room where together with Hannah, we are going to show you some techniques on how to work creatively in an empty, in this empty space like this. Now we're starting a shoot and I'm starting with a simple flat image of Hannah standing by the wall and then we will add some sense of depth, some contrast, some dimension, some lines. So let's take our first shot and see how it looks. And just look straight at the camera just like that. Perfect. So now let's take a look at the image. Uh, the image indeed looks flat. Uh, there is no creative lighting. There is no lines, no patterns, no depth of field because she's standing by the wall. So the first technique that we're using is we are creating a shallow depth of field by moving Hannah away from the wall and shooting with uh, aperture wide open and now I'm shooting with f1.8 this will create a blurry background and separate Hannah from the background adding some sense of depth uh, and dimension to the image so now let's take a shot and see how this shot uh, looks different from our first image Hannah move a little bit closer to me just like that perfect Now let's take a look at the image. Uh, the shot looks uh, kind of similar to our previous shot, but what we see is there is no shadow from Hannah by the wall, so it seems like there is nothing behind her. There is a little bit of uh, depth and the background is blurry, so it looks kind of different, but uh, there is no creative lighting, there is no pattern, there is nothing that will add that way to the image it seems look it, it still looks like we're in an empty space so for a second technique we're adding a foreground as you can see we are in an empty room there is no furniture there is nothing to create that um, foreground but you can use uh, a prism a piece of glass in my case i'm going to use um, a lens filter like this and this is a crystal that is attached to the lens and you don't really need to hold anything so it's pretty cool so with the uh, with the prism or with the crystal we can actually create um, foreground we will add a sense of depth dimension to the image and we will make our background even more blurry so let's take a shot and see how it looks And with this, you can just tr have to experiment, try to position it in a different places of your lens. And of course, you have to play with those uh, prisms, with uh, crystals to get the look that you're going for. Uh, you have to constantly reposition it to see where it looks better, on the corner, on the side of your lens. So now I'm trying to position it right on the lower corner of my lens. And now I'm not getting exactly what I need because I don't have any light. The lighting situation is not what I normally do. It's really flat. That is why I'm not getting um, the right effects that I'm going for. But I still got uh, some interesting visual effect. So now let's uh, build up the, a more creative shot, adding some lights. The third technique that we're using is we're adding patterns to our background. And this way we are creating a background. We're separating Hannah from the background even more and we're adding some visual effects 
to the image. So here I have um, a pattern metal sheet that I got from a craft store and I have them in different shapes and patterns. So I position my pattern on the light stand and I position light right uh, behind it. This way I created some patterns on the wall. You can do the same thing with a fabric, with a lace. So let's see if I bring this right in front of, them, of my light. Give me a second. Just like that, you can create different visual effects, different patterns. Uh, you can add some flowers even if your lace has some flowers. So it's pretty cool. Uh, let me take a shot and see what we get. And I move a little bit to the middle. Perfect. I had to do some adjustments to my settings. Uh, keep in mind that you first have to um, adjust your exposure to the background and then add additional source of light to lead up her face and her body. So now let's take a look at the shot. Now we separated Hannah from the background and we added some interesting patterns to our background and it just looks uh, visually uh, more interesting, I would say. We added some weight and dimension to the, to the image. Another technique to separate our subject from the background is adding a rim light. Here I have continuous light Stella Pro CLX10 by Light and Motion, which is positioned 45 degrees in the direction of her shoulder. Let me turn it on. So let's take a shot and see how it looks. Hannah, if you could do the same pose and move your hair away from your shoulders. Just like that, perfect. That's beautiful. Okay. So we separated Hannah from the background by adding a little bit of our light on her shoulder. And by the way, I did it by uh, adding barn doors to my continuous light to control direction of the light. So now let's uh, combine all these four techniques. Uh, let's create a foreground, background, and rim light in one shot. So let's, let's do that. Since we learned some of the techniques and now we can achieve some interesting creative looks. And since we're in an empty room with one window, we can take advantage of that window and use the window light. You can use natural window light, or in my situation, we have overcast and there is no direct light coming from the window, so I position a tungsten light right behind the window to imitate sun. So the first look we're going for is airy, soft look with lots of highlights, and we're going to create highlights by adding backlight behind our subject. So I'm positioning Hannah right in front of the window with the light behind her, and she's going to be facing me. So Hannah, if you can turn this way. And for this specific shot, I'm gonna bring a reflector. And with the silver side of the reflector, I'm gonna add some light back to Hannah's face. Hannah, if you can move this way to the side, yeah, and closer to me. And a little tiny step to the side, yeah, just like that, perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and take the shot. Okay, beautiful, let's do it one more time. That pose looks perfect, just keep it exactly like that. Love it. Okay, perfect. So the first look is really airy. We have lots of highlights behind her, which also separates her from, back, from the background. It adds a sense of depth to the image. And now what we will do is we will add foreground by using um, crystals or you can use a prism. So let's go ahead and try. And do the same exact pose 
the same position and I'm just gonna play with the with the with the crystals and again you can experiment by moving them around your lens to create some interesting visual effects perfect let's do it one more time Very good. Uh, so we got the shot, we added foreground to the image, we add even more blur to our background and it's really airy, it's really soft. So our next look is going to be a film noir look and for that we're going to change the setup a little bit. To get a film noir look, we are adding contrast and deep shadows to our image. And to do so, we are going to add blinds that we brought with us because this empty room uh, has window without any blinds and we are going to position our continuous light right behind the blinds. Uh, you can go with the same look using just a harsh natural light if you have, but again, this is overcast today, so we're just using our continuous light. Let's uh, turn it on. And Hannah, if you could please stand right by the wall and bring your arms up. Yeah, just like that, that's perfect. As far as your framing, you can go with a full body shot, with medium shot, and the close-up shot. Now let me do some close-up shots. Hannah, if you could move a little bit closer to the blinds, just like that. And yeah, that's a beautiful pose. Perfect. Make sure that the light is crossing her eye to add catch lights. Now let's take a look at the images. We got really cool film noir look images. It was really simple, you have to try, especially if you're working in an empty space, that will add some creativity to uh, your images. And now let's move, move to uh, some moody looks. Now we're going for our final look. So what we're gonna do is pretty much combine all the techniques that we've talked about, but we're also adding colors to the image. And we're gonna do that with the spotlights. We have two spotlights, one blue light that is facing Hannah and one is uh, facing the wall. And we're adding some patterns on the wall to again, to separate Hannah from the wall. We have reflector on the other side and uh, I'm using crystal to create a foreground. So let's uh, take some shots. Okay, yeah, point your toes, that's beautiful, lean a little bit more forward, perfect, one, two, three, beautiful, one more time, okay, very good, all right, so let's take a look at the shots. If you don't have a studio, but you have at least an empty room, you have so much to experiment with. Try all these techniques, be creative, think outside the box, experiment with lighting, with prism, patterns and lines.